Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Arshilahi, and we're here on this lovely sunny evening. Uh, and online, we've got a very good friend of mine and also business partner, Neil Ward. Neil McCoy Ward. Neil, are you online? Yeah, hi, Arsh. How you doing? Yeah, good, thank you, mate. Good. Thanks for being here with us tonight. Right, tonight, me and Neil are on a mission. That mission is to take you on a rent-to-rent -rent journey. Now, uh, we ran this webinar uh, just over a week ago, but just as we started to get to the meat or the core of the webinar, it cut out, which meant that, you know, we, on that point, I think we had the best part of 350 people listening in. And at that moment, I don't know what happened, it just cut out straight. So I'm hoping that we're not going to have any issues tonight. But if you, if you were there last time, first of all, thank you for coming back. And hopefully you're going to get to hear all the stuff that we couldn't tell you last time. So, okay, moving moving on. Um, in the far right hand side of your screen, you should have a box which should be a questions box. If you can just, if you can just in there, just say yes or no that you can hear me clearly and correctly. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So so far everyone's saying that. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Right. Okay. And when I'm looking down the list of all the people that's logged on today. There's not many people that I recognise, so that's really a good thing. Um, so what we're going to be doing, we're going to be talking about rent-to-rent -rent deals today, but we'll be looking at two different kinds of things. We'll be looking at rent-to-rent -rent deals and also how to potentially deal source rent-to-rent -rent, uh, opportunities. So there's going to be pretty much two opportunities here for you tonight. Right, so let's get straight into it. I'm just going to shut the Sure. Right. Okay. So, my name is Lahi and I run a group. I think it's around twelve companies now with my brother Aki Lahi, and together we're landlords and letting agents. We've been letting properties since nineteen seventy three, which, technically speaking, isn't correct because I wasn't born until nineteen eighty. Uh, we've now got well in excess of five hundred tenants. I only keep five hundred on because it's a nice round number, but I think we're well into six hundred plus, and we've got a very uh, impressive 100% rent collection record with a very high 98% occupancy rate. I checked in with my office. I decided not to work this morning. I woke up, uh, my daughter woke me up quite early, so I decided to have the day off. And I just checked in with my office just to see how we're looking, how many rooms we had vacant. I think we calculated that we had three, uh, three vacancies out of the whole portfolio. So that's not bad going. It's actually less than 1%. So, uh, the, these are things that we'll be talking about tonight. So uh, one of the things that I do, um, there's a sh some shameless plugs that we do run workshops. We run a rent to rent workshop. We run a deal sourcing workshop as well as a HMO workshop. And as well as that, the one thing that I'm probably most proud of is that I get to write in some fantastic publications. And if for those that know or those that don't know, is that I write an article in a magazine called YPN Magazine, which is your property network. And if you don't know about it, maybe the next step that you should take is to Google Magazine and read all about it. It's a magazine written by property investors for property investors. And I thought that it was fitting to put this, ad, uh, to put this um, article in that I wrote, I think it was tail end of last year, where I was talking about rent to rent and whether it was worth the hype. And we'll be talking about some of these examples a little later on. Now, a little plug, uh, don't mind if, you, hopefully you don't mind, but I've actually just finished writing a book. It's called Boom Bust and Back Again. Uh, it's not officially launched yet, but I've just literally put it on Amazon as well as my website. Uh, it's available in paperback and Kindle edition, and it can be yours for $9.99. So if you think that's of interest, by all means, um, it'd be fantastic for you to have a read, but more importantly, leave a review on Amazon. So that's enough about me. So we've got a young gentleman on the line. His name's Neil McCoy Ward, um, and he's going to introduce himself. He's going to tell us a little bit about who he is, what he's doing, but more importantly, why you guys should be listening to him. So Neil, over to you. Okay, thanks, Ash. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, firstly. So my um, background, for those who don't know, I, I started as a landlord in 2005. And quite an interesting story because the house I bought in 2005 
at that time the road was, you know, it was pretty average, um, right by the city centre. There wasn't really anything too special about it. But um, in the last couple of years, it's really gone up as a very nice road, very wealthy road, things like that. So just over this weekend, I've actually moved into the first investment property that I, I, I ever bought, which is really strange coincidence. And um, so since that time, the last 10 years, I've, I've you know bought plenty of houses and flats, um, mostly single lets for the first seven or eight years. And it's in the last couple of years I've gone to larger properties. Um, which we're going to be talking about today when we, we discuss rent to rent. Um, uh, the other thing I do is I'm an entrepreneur. I have been doing that for, for a long time now. A marketing consultant, sales trainer. I, I travel all, all over the world actually teaching sales training to people. And I also help Ash with that as well on the trainings. The, <clears throat> the other thing is, is rent to rent. Me and Ash actually did a, a webinar quite a long time ago now. That's when we first started working together. And on that, that webinar, I basically showed everyone how I got to my first five and a half thousand pounds net profit within the first five months of doing rent to rent. And, um, and then we did another webinar, a follow up at about the 10 month point, which was showing how I made 11,000 pounds a month in that. So we've um, over uh, over time, the other thing I do is deal sourcing, and I have two deal sourcing companies, and um, I, I hand over entrepreneur in residence for Coventry University. I've written a few books, and I'm the director of the Forward Thinking Group, which is a a group of six companies. So that is a really quick rundown of uh, of my background. But the main thing is <clears throat> that I, I I do have a large rent to rent portfolio. Um, I wouldn't say it's the biggest in the UK, but I, I doubt it's far off now. And um, I help Ash with his with his trainings. So that's 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 a, a good summary of, of me, I think. Okay. So Neil, you you like to talk about commitment and uh, what your commitment to the people listening in on the web webinar. But before we do that, shall we do what we consider? the reason why as to here that you're here. So we've got quite a lot of people online today. So what I'd like you to do in the far right hand side where it's got the questions box, if you can, first of all, tell us what's your experience? Are you completely new to property? Are you completely new to this strategy? Um, and more, more so, what is it that brings you here? Is it because you want to escape the rat race? Is it because you want to create more passive income? Is it because you want a better lifestyle? It could be anything. It could be that you just don't like your boss, uh, and you want to you want to be able to leave that job. So, if you can just tell us a little bit about who you are, where we are, because this is a really important part for me. It's all really good to understand, from my point of view, really, to to see who we got online and what's your motivation. Okay, so someone wants to build a systemized property business to create more jobs. Uh, already investing but new to rent to rent. I'm here because I want to buy my time back. Okay, interesting. Uh, people want to say that they want to be financially free, they want to escape the rat race, spend more time with the family. Okay, so that's interesting. Okay, um, recently been made redundant after 11 years, want to gain passive income, got a few single lets, portfolio single lets, doesn't really generate a great cash flow per month, need a new cash flow strategy. Completely new and find it hard to get to rent to rent. Network with some rent to rent people in London. My motivation is to make money for my family. Okay, so we've got a student surveyor. I live in my own lease option, six bed HMO, looking for more. Well done, Chris. Um, okay, fantastic. Got a couple of rent to rent through agents. Uh, Want to learn more about direct to landlord. Okay. So in a nutshell, I'd probably say that we've got quite a few people on, online that have already got some single lets and a small portfolio, and they're possibly looking at increasing that to generate more cash flow, um, so, which will hopefully help them with their lifestyle. Right, Neil, so now, what's your commitment to people online? Yeah, thanks, Ash. So my commitment is really simple. It's, it's not just the people online, it's anybody that does any training with me and Ash. And everyone talks about they want money, they want 
travel, they want this, they want that. But actually, if you go deeper down and you go to the root, actually what everybody's really looking for is happiness. That's really what it comes down to, whether that's through your family or whatever it is, it's, it's happiness. So the way that Ash and I sort of um, build on that commitment is we, we do it through education. We educate you to be able to create a passive income and, and that's how we do it. So a lot of people say money doesn't buy happiness and all that sort of, you know, the old things. But actually, true, it doesn't buy the happiness, but it, it buys the things that get you to be happy. If, if you're in a job that, you know, pays minimum wage and you're working six days a week, how would you be able to travel to the first picture there, which is Thailand? You know, it's an expensive place to travel to, you know, things like that. How would you get the time off two or three weeks to, to do that? Um, that's what money does. It enables you to actually do these things. It gives you the health. Anybody that says they're in perfect perfect health but they commute two hours a day and they, they work and five and they, you know, work on weekends and stuff, it's, it's, it's difficult. I mean, I'm not saying that you, you can't be in perfect health but it's very difficult to be able to exercise and do everything else that you want to do. Next one is travel. I've just um, come back from a, a European trip, traveled all over Europe for, for a month and whilst I was away my rent to rent business was still making me money. When I came back my bank balance was very healthy and I hadn't done anything at all because the systems that I have in place had, had looked after everything for me. Um, next is more time, actually having a lot of time to yourself to be able to do the things that you want to do in life. I remember when I had no time and the amount of stress I felt every day was, was ridiculous because I wanted to do so many things but there was just no time to go out and do those things and I felt trapped in a way and like I was underachieving. And then we come on to relationships and family. So whether we're talking about personal relationships or friendships or intimate relationships, it all falls under the same category. Again, if you're in a, a job that you don't like or you're working so many hours, it's so difficult to have that perfect family and to have those perfect relationships. We, you know, some of the people that come on the training say, I kind of have come on this training because every day I get up and go to work and my kids are still asleep. Every day when I get home, my kids have already gone to bed. I only see them on a Sunday. And I remember that guy, and it was really hard, really, really hard for him. So things like that is really what's important in life. Having the money and all of that stuff is great, but these six things here are, are what I would consider the key things that will create happiness in, in, in your life. So that's my commitment, same with Ash. We want to help you to get this back, to actually take this control back within your life through rent, rent through achieving um, it's not quite passive income because you do have to work, but um, if you systemize it properly, then it's very little work. So, next slide, Ash. Yes. Okay. So, do you want to talk us through this one, Neil? Yeah. So, this is really interesting. I found out these stats recently. According to the insurance industry, of 100 people that reach 65 years old, only one will be rich. So, 1%. Four will be wealthy. Fifteen percent will have some money put aside. So these are your typical pensioners, like your grandparents and people like that, where they'll have they'll have a little bit of money put aside for a rainy day. But actually, that rainy day never usually comes. And then when they finally pass, the money is inherited and taxed to death as well. And um, that's that group of people. Eighty percent. This is the shocking thing. Eighty percent will be broke. I mean completely broke. These are the people that you hear about on the news or through age concern. Um, OAP died because they couldn't put their heating on, they couldn't afford heating, things like that during the winter. It's, it's absolutely shocking. So really, of 100 people, only five will ever have what they want in life, either be rich or wealthy. All the rest are, you know, the other 95% don't really have a lot of money into their old age and that's what we want to avoid with all of you. Um, it's, <clears throat> it's, it's not what we want for anybody. We want you to be in the top 5% so that you, you, know, you can have that lifestyle, you can have those good relationships and the good family and everything that goes with it. 
Okay, so hopefully you've understood that. And now what we're going to do is one thing that we always try and do with this. We want to make sure that everyone is on the same hymn sheet. So I appreciate that we've got some new people online. And so tonight we're going to take it back to the bare brick. And we're going to look at what's involved with rent to rent before we start looking at the more aggressive strategies. So with a rent to rent, there should be three people involved or three parties involved. The first person is the landlord who actually owns the property. Second person is you, hopefully, who will be doing the rent to rent deal. And the third person will be the tenant who will hopefully be renting the property off you. So it very is very simple. Where you approach the landlord with your proposition, you may have to then do some work to enable to multi let the property. So when we talk about multi-let, we'll, we'll go on to talk about multi-let in a second. And the third step is that hopefully by renting out the property each by room as opposed to a single let, you'll be generating more cash flow from the property, which means that uh, you'll be getting more coming in than you should be paying out, which should give you your profit per calendar month. Now, does everyone understand that concept? If you don't, please, again, in the question box, please say yes or no, because we want to make sure that you're with us throughout the whole presentation. <laughs> And the reason why I like this strategy so much is because with rent rent yes, you are going to be creating a HMO, whether it's a licensed or unlicensed HMO, it all comes down to the style of property that you take on. And we could talk about that in greater detail if you like. Now, most of you, some of you said that you've got some standard buy to a standard single let buy to lets. Now, this is where you'll completely relate to this. Now, if you've got a property and it's a single let and it's let out to a family and let's just say for the argument's sake it's let out at 850 pounds per month now whilst it's occupied everything's going fine and you know with the, with the single let depending on where you are in the country you know uh, you may generate from a you may benefit from a bit of cash flow but once you start taking into consideration voids bad debt and maintenance you're possibly just about breaking even and the point of being in property isn't to break even it's about to make money but more importantly is that when this family leave or if this family leaves in between the next lot of family moving in you've got a void period which means that now you've got a void area where you're still gonna have to pay mortgage on the property now let's just use an example we've got four bedrooms a living room a dining room a kitchen and a bathroom now, if you were to do this and turn it into HMO, potentially you could use the four rooms on the first floor and one of the reception rooms on the ground floor and turn that into a five bed HMO over two floors, which means that it's not licensed to the ball, uh, but it is still a HMO. So you could rent out, and let's just use for this example that each room is going to be rented out at £500 per month. So, uh, so, so at four hundred pounds a month. So, five rooms at four hundred pounds a month is two thousand pound a month, and plus then you've got your uh, living room, kitchen, and bathroom, which is all communal space. Mm -hmm. Now, let's have a look at how this works financially. Five rooms at four hundred pound a month is two thousand pound per month. Now, let's have a look at the costs that are involved. Now, the rent of the landlord. Uh, let's just say for the, in this example. £850 a month. Now, standard procedure with a rent to rent is that you, as a landlord or the managing agent, will be responsible for the utility bills, which could include council tax, water rates, electricity, gas, possibly broadband, possibly cleaner, and that could all calculate to circle around between £350 and £400 a month. Now, on the basis that you're generating £2,000 a month, taking out the cost would leave you a profit of £800 a month. And the reason why so many people are jumping on this bandwagon of rent to rent is because it's a strategy where you do not require a mortgage. You do not require a solicitor or mortgage surveyors. You do not require a 25% deposit. In actual fact, you, you actually require very little capital to get going. More important, it's a lot easier to generate cash flow from the property. Uh, and turn it and very easy to grow into a business and the best thing about it all is that you determine the terms of the agreement now if you for the guys that have got buy to lets online when you bought that buy to let could you determine the terms of the agreement or was it the mortgage company 
of course it had to be the mortgage company otherwise they wouldn't give you the mortgage for the property whereas here if you don't think it stacks for you you can turn around and say you know what guys okay instead of paying you 850 you know according to my calculations in order for it to work for me and for me to make a bit of money as well it may need to be 700 on the basis that you've taken the property on a decent period of time um, so that could be now I know that Neil specializes in three-year agreements I like to take seven-year agreements the longer the term the more the incentive for the landlord to be able to deal with me that's my personal opinion now Neil likes to do it a different way which hopefully we'll talk about shortly where he puts in slight rent increases to incentivize the landlord and I think that's a great way of doing it because obviously my landlord's locked into me for seven years at the same rent whereas Neil can incentivize his by giving them an additional slightly more rent uh, year on year which will retain the landlord for a lot longer so these are some of the properties that Neil's got in his portfolio at the moment that he's taken on as a rent to rent and well, he's going to be telling you about his journey about how he met the landlord what how the conversation went with uh, what the standard of the property were was like when he took it on the standard property that it is now who's got living in there and the kind of cash flow that he's generated from it so before we do that Neil can I just ask I'm just quickly going through some of the questions okay so uh, some of the questions that we've got is who's responsible for the maintenance of the property now it's a good question and thanks for logging in Bert because remember what I said about determining the terms of the agreement now this is where you can do it where you could say actually I'll take it on for seven years but you may be responsible for the maintenance or I'll tell you what if, if you allow me to take it on for seven years I'll be responsible for the maintenance now I've got properties in the rent to rent portfolio where the landlord still looks after the maintenance because I've given a little bit more than I anticipated but then in in order to weigh up the balance I've had to tell him that he's going to look after the maintenance of the property so this is where the terms and your negotiation skills come into play. Uh, one of the questions that Dilip's asked is that with a seven year agreement, do you need to inform land registry? No, you don't. Anything over seven years, so if it's seven years and one day, then yes, you have to register it, but uh, anything up to seven years, then no, you don't. Uh, okay, so Neil, sorry, I, I, cut, I cut in and uh, so, Neil, why don't you tell us about these deals that you're doing in commentary? Yeah, okay, Ash. Um, so, the, the example here is a recent um, one, uh, 1st of July. It seems a long time ago now, actually, because we've done a few since this one. This was done on the 1st of July. And just to show you, a lot of people, they, they do rent to rent and they quit really quickly. And we hear it all the time, people quitting, because they say, Oh, I did it for a couple of months and I didn't get anywhere. This is not a couple of months strategy. This is a long, long-term strategy. The longer you do it for, the more money you make. Now, to, the reason I say that is, if you look at the bottom picture there, that's what this house looked like before we took it on. And it was empty for years. I mean, you're talking four or five years this house has been empty. And I've known about it for the last year. And when I approached the, the landlord, as Ash was saying, the terms just weren't right because there was a lot of money needed to be invested into this house and I wasn't willing to put the five grand in that was needed. So we went back and forth, back and forth over the year and eventually the landlord just called me and said, look, the council is now saying that I've got to pay all this council tax backdated over a year and I can't be doing with this anymore. How much is it going to cost me for you to take it on? So straight away I, I set the terms that I wanted so a new bathroom suite, a new kitchen, brand new kitchen installed downstairs. I wanted a new bathroom added on where the utility room was. I wanted a shower and toilet and sink. So we had two bathrooms for this property. And um, so also I want you to pay for the new carpets and underlay. So of course he sort of, jaw, his jaw dropped when he knew it was going to cost him about £3,000 for all of that, three to £4,000. But he did agree to it in the end. Which is um, which, which was good. So my investment on this was about eighteen hundred pounds. So it wasn't too bad at all, really, considering that the profit per calendar month is circa six hundred pounds, approximate. 
So if you look at the figures on that, within three months, I will break even on that house. And I've got that for three years then. So three years worth of, worth of profit on this property. So 1st of July, acquired it. Um, well, actually, I acquired it a, a little bit before then, but it was ready to rent on the 1st of July. And we did rent it straight away. All the rooms were, were gone within two days. I had a month rent-free period as well, so I only started paying on the 1st of August. And so the break-even point on it was 1st of October. So it's a very, very nice um, nice deal, really, on this house. And what else, what else can I tell you on it? The other thing that's interesting is you always hear people talk all the time. I know all the other rent-to-rent -rent trainers talk all the time about letting agents and going to letting agents. I will tell you the complete opposite. I'll say don't even waste your time going to letting agents. Completely avoid letting agents and instead go direct to a vendor because if I got this from a letting agent, they haven't done any work at all and yet they're going to charge me a minimum of £500 straight away as a fee. Then there's all the fees, then they're going to want to do all the deposits and they're going to want to charge a management fee and all this other stuff. I'm, I'm massively out of pocket. This cost me nothing. It didn't cost me a penny to acquire this at all because it was a referral. When you do a good job in rent to rent, you'll get referrals all the time. In fact, as we stand right now on the 6th of August, I've got so many properties I can't even do them all. There's probably about about nine just sat there that I can't do anything with. And I've been open with the landlords and I've said, I can't do anything with these because my teams can't refurbish them fast enough. Um, so there's just nine just sat there doing absolutely nothing. And the landlords are all saying, well, we'll wait, we'll wait until you're ready because a lot of them, and this is a question that comes up, why would people do a rent to rent with me? And the reason is most of these landlords are completely fed up of using letting agents. They've been messed around non-stop, and they're, they're now just fed up with it. So when an offer like this comes along, and we'll show you how to present the rent to rent offer, a landlord will snap your hand off. They will actually phone you and chase you down until you do the deal with them in a lot of cases. So whenever I hear people saying, I've been doing this now, I've been on this course a year ago, you know, obviously not my course, <laughs> I went on this course a year ago, I still haven't got a rent to rent. I don't get that at all. It makes no sense whatsoever to Ash and I because usually people come on our training and within a month some of them have got two or three houses. It's that quick because it's all direct to vendor. You do all the marketing and sourcing strategies that we teach you. You get all the material that we give you and all the letters and the marketing and adverts and it's just really quick so I don't really, I don't really get that. I, I guess it's outside of my reality for people to spend a year trying to get a, a rent to rent because um, for me they, they come every single day. Every day I get one called in through um, to offer me a house. So it, it does get pretty crazy after a while. So next slide Ash. So now this is the meat. This is a part of the, uh, the webinar that people didn't get to hear last time. We got to this point and unfortunately it did cut out so I'm hoping touch wood that we're still okay. Neil, you still okay? Yeah, good. Now, one of the questions that we constantly hear and people that always message me, message Neil, is, oh, she talk, she talk about rent to rent, but does it work everywhere in the UK? Or does it? Is it specifically only in the north where landlords struggle to lend their house? Now, just before I came onto this webinar tonight, I did a bit of uh, research and I just had a quick look to see how many HMOs there are in the UK at present. Now, if you don't mind me asking a question, and if you wouldn't mind just filling in on the right hand side, how many HMOs do you think there are in the UK at present? Okay, so someone's put 3,000, someone's put no idea, uh, someone's put what, legal HMOs, someone's put 55,000, another clue, 100,000, 150,000, 20,000, 20,000, don't really know, a few million, um, okay, right, 
I looked at a statistic in 2004 when HMOs weren't even considered a trendy strategy and there were 640,000 HMOs in 2004. Now, what do you think it is today? Well in excess of that, it's just over 1.2 million HMOs in the UK. Now the reason why I put that statistic out there is because the one thing that I do with the rent to rent strategy is that whereas Neil goes off and creates a HMO, I prefer to take a HMO on that's already been run badly. And the reason why I like to do that is because it's already set up as a HMO. And I'm going to talk to you about a deal in a second that I did recently, uh, and it's in Croydon in London. Now, people said to me that things don't work in London. And I, you know what? When someone says to me that something doesn't work, I'm going to go out and I'm going to prove them wrong. Now, one of the guys that came on one of our workshops, I think in February earlier this year, uh, it's a couple called JC and Mena. And on the last uh, webinar that we did, I actually managed to get Mena online and she did a live testimonial for us. So I'm just trying to see if she's not in. She, no, she's not online tonight. But between February to now, they've just signed up their 12th property. So we're talking a period, not even six months, and they've taken 12 properties on. And more importantly, the reason why these guys are so impressive is because they are based in London. And everyone says that it can't be done in London. Well, they're my, li they're my living testimonial that they, it can happen in London. And more importantly, I'm going to tell you about how I managed to source 30 properties in London for a rent-to-rent -rent strategy. Other people that I've got off and done successfully well and done really, really well is a lady called Deborah. And I think she, within the first couple of months of having attended our course, she, she actually took on 32 properties off one landlord. That's correct, 32 properties off one landlord. Now, I don't know any, pretty much, many other people who have got 32 rent to rent properties. I think that's a fantastic achievement and she has done exceptionally well. And you guys can do it too. So does it work anywhere in the UK or is it or is London exempt? Now I looked today and I looked at Croydon and I just wanted to see how, how many HMOs there are in that location and the well in excess of a thousand just in Croydon alone. So for me, what I would have done personally is that I would have approached all the HMO landlords there. And say, guys, okay, here's the deal that you've got this HMO. I don't know how it's performing for you, but how about if I make your life easier? And they're going to say, okay, they're interested because I'm, I'm now talking about convenience. I said, how about if I rent your property off you directly and then you allow me to, uh, or you allow me to manage it in the same respect as a managing agent would, and you get one set rent every month for the next seven years. Now, previously, that landlord may have had to run around after five, six, or seven tenants, making sure that their rent's being collected. Whereas now, I'm offering them more time to themselves so that they can go off and do the greater things that we talked about, the holidays, time with their family, etc., on the basis that they're getting hassle-free income as me, as their tenant. Now, I'm taking it off on for seven years, and I'm going out and renting, renting the rooms. Now, other things that I look for is where other landlords may have previously been undercharging for, uh, for their rooms. So I've been to one landlord where he was charging the best part of 200 pounds a room. And he thought, to be fair, he was uh, overcharging. But in actual fact, when I took the property on, uh, a lot of the tenants, uh, well, the property was half empty. The rooms that were uh, were empty when I decided to fill them, we let them out at £400 a room, which is pretty much double what he was achieving. Now, you could say that this comes down to my experience, comes down to my skill, but there's nothing special or even clever about renting out a room. You've got to know where to put it, 
how to market it and how to pitch it to a tenant. Now, you saw in the previous slide that Neil actually presented his room in a format where it's easy on the eye and if you put it in the right places and the right property portals and you word your adverts correctly, his phone will be ringing every day for those rooms come rain, sleet or shine. Is that correct, Neil? That's right, Ash, 100%. Okay, so look at the first picture. Now, if you were a prospective tenant and the landlord put a picture up like that, do you think the landlord would be getting many calls? The picture on the on the bottom there of the, uh, of the slide. I doubt you'd get many calls, whereas now, as the way that Neil's presented it, it looks warm, it looks inviting, it looks like someone's got breakfast in bed. It's like, uh, you know, let's let's be a little bit crude about it. It's like bedroom porn, picture porn. You want to you want to live there? You can see yourself living there. So, and that's that's the key to renting out rooms. Make it look inviting. Make it uh, make it easily affordable. Make it accessible. And that's the key to rent, rent or letting in general. So now let's start talking about this one. So I got a I got a lead where it was direct to vendor, where a vendor had built a lot of apartments in in Croydon, and he built them. And it originally he was looking to sell them, but they're quite a high ticket. Well, not high ticket price in comparison for Croydon. They were looking circa starting at around four hundred fifty thousand. But then he decided that he needed cash flow from, they'd been empty for quite a while, so he needed cash flow. I think he'd built them eight months ago, and for eight months he'd been sat there empty. So I got the lead, went in and met with the, the vendor, who's a developer, and I agreed a rent with them at £450 for a two-bed apartment. Uh, sorry, not £450, £1,450 for a two-bedroom apartment. But the beauty with it was when I walked around, I could see that we could generate or create a third room by separating the living room away from the kitchen diner. The kitchen diner was still quite a large size. Now, I calculated that after charging out the rooms at £800, £700 and £750, after all costs, we would still generate a net profit of seven, uh, sorry, five hundred and fifteen pounds, which over thirty apartments per calendar month would have netted me a cash flow of fifteen and a half thousand pounds. Now, would you be happy with this? Would you, if someone came, if someone came to you with an opportunity like this and they give you thirty apartments all in one go, would you do it or would you not do it? So some people are saying that they'd be scared. Some people would say no. Some people would say, I don't know, uh, they're still unsure. Okay. Now, believe it or not, what I decided to do with this is that because I'm based in Wolverhampton, is that I wouldn't be able to successfully be able to manage it and keep the 98% occupancy rate because it's such a far distance. So what I decided to do is actually trade on the leads. So for every apartment... We packaged it up to a point where it was accessible for every investor and we charged them £5,000 per lead, which over 30 apartments, which is £150,000 in reservation fees and revenue. All we had to do, we created the value in the lead and more importantly, we generated the equivalent to 10 months worth of rent to rent work in one month, in seven days, let's say a month after phone calls, etc. So, so someone's bought, how much did you spend to put the furniture, etc.? With this deal, I managed to negotiate with the vendor that they had to partly furnish the, uh, the apartments so that we, we didn't actually have to spend anything on uh, furnishing the apartments. Um, some people just thought that uh, it, they reckon it'd be a step too far for them. But... In, a, in actual fact, you know, one of the great sayings that uh, Richard Branson said is that sometimes if you don't know how to do it, if you're presented with an opportunity, you don't know how to do it, just say yes and learn how to do it after. Okay, there's a bit of risk here that on the basis that your £1,450 £1, a month is a lot of money to spend on rent. But you've got to be comfortable with the fact knowing that you can rent it out. 
And that doesn't just matter whether it's in Croydon or whether it's in Kensington or whether it's in Knightsbridge. Regardless of where you are. Regardless of where you are. No, I'm going to bit of feedback. Let me let me mute myself. Okay, so regardless of where you are in the country, the fact remains the same that if you turn around and you're saying to the landlord that you're going to rent the property off them for three, five or seven years, I took this on on a seven year lease. You've got to be able to make sure or calculate what your break even point is and you've got to make sure that those rooms are rented out. And more importantly, you, you decide that whether you're going to do it yourself and you're going to generate the cash flow from the property over seven years or whether you're going to sell that lead on. Because once you've created the value and the value is in the contract, you can actually trade that lead on. So that's what I found there. But Neil's going to be talking to you about some of the other, um, the other ways that you can source rent-to-rent -rent leads. Now, if you are interested... Uh, I've found lists of landlords across London. I haven't contacted them yet, but that's my next name. And by all means, you know, because you're on my mailing list, I'm happy to send you deals. So if you if that's of interest yet, just let me know towards throughout the process. And yeah, I'll try and get those over to you. Now, Neil, if you can unmute yourself and then let's start talking about the envelopes, different colours. And let's start talking about the envelopes. Okay. Good stuff. Yeah, there's some uh, good points there, Ash. So um, we did a bit of that was a bit of rent to rent and deal sourcing and packaging all together. So it was a bonus. So this is um, one of the strategies that I do. And as I said, because I've got so many deals on the table at the minute, I've not actually sent any envelopes out in a while. And yet some of the the, the campaigns I did say three or four months ago. I'm still getting calls, a couple of calls every single week from these letters that I sent out. So like I said at the beginning, this isn't a short-term strategy. This is a long-term strategy. Although, when we talk letters in a second, you'll find that you will get calls straight away, sometimes within days, and you'll meet up within days, and you'll have a, a deal signed within days. So this is, in my opinion, one of the most effective ways to source deals direct to vendor. Now, the way this came about was one day I was sat in the office and I got a letter and it was in a pink envelope. And I thought, what on earth is this? And I had a big pile of letters. But which one did I open first? The pink envelope because it was handwritten, had a stamp on it, and it was pink. And I thought, well, what on earth is this? So I opened it and it was basically um, it, it was it was a marketing letter to me. For, for my business and I thought god that's really interesting and I did actually call the woman as well because I was so intrigued by it and since then I've been using this technique so I write letters directly to the landlords of the houses it doesn't matter if the house is rented currently or if it's empty it makes no difference because it's a long-term strategy for me and most people get the letters completely wrong I've seen all these letters from other trainings and courses and things and I just think there's a reason why you're not getting calls because there's too much on there. There's a really simple process and you can write this down if you like. The idea of sending out a letter is just one thing. There's only one goal and target from the letter and that's to get a phone call. That's it. That's all the letter is designed to do. The next process, there's only one thing that the phone call is designed to do. That's to get a meeting. And then from the meeting, you can get your deal, you get your first property. So that is the process. But people do it the wrong way around. Some people write everything in the letter and they send that out to the landlords. And no wonder they don't get any replies because there's no reason for that landlord to call you. You've already put everything in the letter. It's, um, it's, it's not the way to do it, let's just say. So the way you actually get the landlord's address, because a lot of problems come up for many people that call us and they say, uh, sorry, students that call Ash and I, and they say, the landlord's um, registered address is at the house. Now straight away, that does cause a bit of a, a problem because that means in most cases that the mortgage is not a buy-to-let product. It means they're on a residential product. So if that does come about, 
you're best off not taking that property anyway unless they're willing to transfer to a um, buy to let product or an HMO product depending on what you're going to do so that's the, the most important thing there but in 80% of cases the address will be elsewhere and the way you get that address is through the land registry so there's a portal on the land registry where you type in the house number and the postcode and if you're wondering how to get the postcode just type it into Google 20 you know 21 ABC Road whatever it is and you'll get the postcode you can then put that into land registry it will then cost you three pound for every search that you do and that will give you all the details that you want on that property whether it's got a mortgage or not who the mortgage is with when the, the landlord bought that property how much they paid for that property there's all sorts on there and it's absolutely fantastic as well as the home address of the owner and that's where you write your letter to. So you write your letter, you type it up, and it's a personal letter. It's not from a business. Again, it's a huge mistake people make. You then handwrite the envelope and you put a stamp on it. And then you also add, there's a, a red stamp that I, I had made, and it says, to be opened by addressee only. So you stamp that top and bottom, both sides of your letter. And then the person, when they get it, are really intrigued. There's, you know, sometimes when people send out these white envelopes and it's just, you know, got the landlord's address written on it. So the landlords sometimes don't get it, or if they do, they don't open them, and things get lost because it's a white letter in a pile of white letters. But if you have a colourful letter, it either looks like a birthday card or it looks like something interesting. I would say, when I first started doing rent to rent. I got 80% of my leads and landlords through this strategy. Just the letter strategy alone, forgetting about all the other stuff, advertising and everything else. Just from writing letters, I got 80% of the houses. And here's the other interesting thing. You'll notice a pattern emerging when you're doing the letters. And that pattern is, you'll find that you'll, you'll, you'll do a search for a house and it'll say, Mr. Joe Bloggs is the owner. You'll do a search for another house and it'll say, Mr. Joe Bloggs is the owner. You think, oh, right, he owns two. You do another search, Mr. Joe Bloggs is the owner. It isn't how you would think. It's not one landlord owns one house. It's more likely that one landlord owns 40% of the houses in that area that are rentals. It's really, uh, it's really interesting. But the more you do this, the more you'll start to notice the patterns and, and it just becomes so simple. You know, it, it, it's it's crazy to think I only started on the 1st of May last year and I've got one of the biggest portfolios in the country now of rent to rent. It's it's crazy to think that just from the last year of doing these strategies and now I don't have to do any marketing at all because there's so many referrals coming through from landlords that um, and that's what will happen to you. After the first six to seven months, you won't need to do any more marketing because you'll just get so many referrals coming through. So I know we're short on time, so let's move on to the next one, Ash. Okay, this is my gold mine. Even today, I have to turn away all these leads. What I did was I, um, I had a tradesman, as, as you do when you're in property. I had lots of tradesmen always coming around. And I, don't, I can't exactly remember how it happened, but one day I just talked to one of the tradesmen about about what I do because he was asking what do you do and things like that and I told him and he said well I know loads of empty houses and landlords do you pay any you know, fees or anything and he was sort of being cheeky with it but I thought no actually I, I, I will pay you a fee so I now pay 200 up to 400 pounds cash to my tradesmen every time they bring me a deal so as you can imagine I just get deals brought to me all day long every day because I probably got somewhere between 70 and 100 tradesmen on my books that I speak to every day. So that could be <clears throat> anything from cleaners to all the way through to solicitors. Um, you know, that's that's who I would class as my power team. Okay, they're not they're not sort of tradesmen, but they're my power team. You have mortgage brokers, solicitors, architects, um, cleaners. You have accountants, bookkeepers, builders, electricians, plumbers, heating engineers. Um, you know, I, I, we could go all day long. Um, roofers, gardeners. 
with all these people, if you let them know about what it is you do, I guarantee you, they will bring you more leads than you could ever find yourself. Because these people that are working for the landlords every day, they're in and out of their houses. And if, you, if you're a landlord and you own houses, are you going to do your own plumbing? No. Are you going to do your own electrics? No. Will you do your own gardening? Maybe, but most of the time you'll call a gardener in. And if you've got 10 student houses, I guarantee you you're going to call a cleaning company in to do your end of tenancy cleans. So for me, there's no point reinventing the wheel. I like to do things as simple as possible. So I just get the tradesmen, they go off and find all the houses, and they bring them to me. And it is the most effective strategy you will ever come across, apart from the letter writing to find you deals. If you just did those two alone, you you wouldn't really need to do anything else. Next slide, Ash. <clears throat> okay, so we'll look at the, um, some figures now in terms of return on investment, which is what ROI stands for. Now let's look at a typical rent-to-rent -rent deal. If you were to put in a, a large initial investment, and bear in mind I never really spend more than a thousand pounds unless it's a really good deal. So the one I showed you earlier, I spent eighteen hundred, but that was because it was a really good deal. The landlord was doing everything, renovating a lot of it um, himself. So it's a really good deal. It's going to make me a lot of money over the next three years and out into the future because the relationship will continue. If I just spent two thousand pounds on a refurbishment and I was making £600 a month profit. That's an annual profit of 7200 If you do the math on that, and you divide the 7.2 by the 2, that will give you 3.6 or a 360% return on investment. Now, there's no other investment I know of out there that is guaranteed to give you a 360% ROI. There's, there's nothing. I know people talk about Forex and trading and all that sort of stuff. There's a lot of risk involved there. With this, there's so little risk. You take a property, you do a light renovation on it, so paint it, maybe put new carpets in, put some furniture in. That's it. What, what else is there to do? There, there isn't really anything. You only just rent the rooms. If you do the, the property to a good standard, as Arsh and I teach you how to do, you haven't really got anything to worry about because those rooms will rent so, so quickly. So 360% ROI is phenomenal and I took on a couple of properties this summer where I didn't have to spend a penny on them. The landlord did everything and they make me seven to eight hundred pounds each. So the, the, the ROI on that is just insane. I don't even know how to calculate that on zero. It's infinity I guess you could say. Next slide Ash. So if you have a three-year contract <clears throat> you would be making a thousand percent ROI on the money that you invested if you did invest a large amount like two thousand pounds on a house. You control the asset so there's nothing for, for, for you to worry about and I'll give you an example of this. One of the landlords, at, um, it's a large HMO, it's a licensed property, there was a fair bit of work involved because there was a lot of licensing and he actually said that he he, he wanted to um, sell the property after we'd done all the work. And we were like, sorry, you're in a three-year contract now. So there was no messing around. He just sort of accepted it and said, okay. So what we're doing with that is we're going to sell that property for him and we're going to keep exactly what we've got with it. So the, the new landlord will still get their £1,100 a month on a six bed and it's going to sell for about £165,000 which off the top of my head is about a 12.5% return on investment to whichever investor buys that. Now if you're an accountant or you're a doctor or you're a lawyer and you know nothing about property but you want to get involved and you buy a property and someone like myself approached you, now I'm talking about one of my other companies here which is an investment company, with an offer like that, 12.5% return per year, do you think someone would snap that up? Of course they would. So there isn't really any risk even from that side. Well, if the landlord wants to change his mind, let him change his mind. Just sell the asset. Now, if you compare this, we talked about here, the 1,000% ROI, to what most investors, most property investors get. And I know some of the comments came through saying, um, you know, single lets, things like that. 
most single nets is five to six to seven, eight percent per year return. So over three years, you're talking 15 to 30 percent, for example, over three years. Now compare that to a thousand percent return. And most investors will put 25,000 pounds in, up to 50,000 pounds if you want to buy an HMO. It's a lot of money to tie up when you can be doing other things with that money. Next slide, Ash. So here's something interesting. I'm a, I'm a huge student myself. I study finance and economics and um, all sorts of things. There isn't a lot that I haven't studied. I'm a, it's a hobby of mine to, to just learn as much as I can about everything. And the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers, and, and they're all sort of part of the same family anyway, but the Rockefellers, what's really interesting is this. They, one of their mottos is this. The secret to success is not to own anything at all, but is to control everything. That's what they do. They control everything. They don't really own any of it, so they haven't got any risk or liability. But through their control of assets, they make a fortune. The richest people on the planet. And that's similar to rent to rent. You control the asset, but you haven't got any risk with it. If there's a market crash, do you lose money? No. You've still got your agreement. If the market goes up and the, the house becomes worth a fortune, do you make anything on it? No. It doesn't make any difference. You've still got your agreement. You've still got your plan where you're making six to fifteen hundred pounds profit on each house every single month. And that's it. So it doesn't make any difference to you if the house drops in value or it goes up in value, because that's not your strategy. The strategy I adopt is simple have as many houses as I possibly can and with profits I buy small single let houses. That's it. That is my strategy and once I'm 31 now, once I hit sort of 40 to 50, um, 45 maybe, I won't, I won't buy anymore and then I'll just pay them all off, similar to Ash, my long term plan to just own the houses and that's my pension pot really. But even saying that, when you really get into this properly, you don't even need a long-term pension pot strategy because you make so much cash flow. I mean, it's, it's crazy, but you can actually get up to £10,000 net profit a month very fast. I did it easily within my first year. It's, it's, it's so quick to do. And some people say, yeah, but I haven't got a lot of money to put into this at the beginning. You don't need a lot. I had about three or four thousand pounds, but knowing what I know now, I wouldn't need any money to do it really, because a lot of the houses I took on, I didn't have to pay a penny for them. But if you've got three or four thousand pounds, for example, that will get you if you do one refurb at a thousand and two at fifteen hundred. Let's say you get three houses. Let's say you're making a lot, only six hundred pounds a month on each, so you're getting six, twelve, eighteen hundred pounds. You're now making £1,800 that month. That's enough to get you another rent to rent. You're now on, let's say, 2400 That's enough to get you at least one, if not two more rent to rents the following month. You're building up, you're building up, you're building up. Before you know it, you're, you're at £10,000 a month. It really is that quick. Next slide, Ash. So here's the interesting thing. And... I'm going to be really straight with all of you on, on, on the webinar. So many people get into rent to rent and they do all these courses. I know there's you know loads of courses out there now. Um, they do all these courses and they don't succeed. And the person in the courses will never tell you this. This is why I'm really open with you and say this. If you don't understand how to negotiate or how to talk to people in a business setting like landlords, and you don't understand how a landlord thinks and what their motivations are. There's no point whatsoever in getting involved with rent to rent or property because you will just, you'll never succeed. You'll never be in that top 5% of winners who get into property. So here's what I always say. When you're negotiating, how do you walk up? It's similar to walking up the stairs. You don't jump from step one to seven and then jump back down to five and then up to 10 and then you don't do that. But yet everyone does that when they're negotiating. They start talking about price early on, which is 
your your tenth, eleventh step on the process. It's not right at the beginning. That's the last thing you talk about. Um, you don't talk. You know, there's there's a set process. There's a there's psychological formula that you go through to negotiate. Ash, next slide. <clears throat> So it's just, as I said there, there's no point in into this unless you understand some basic negotiations. And that's where I come in, and that's why Ash got me involved with this. Because Ash said, how is it that the people that you were training privately were going out and getting so many deals so fast? And Ash said, how did you do it? So I explained it was the negotiation side, teaching the negotiations, and that made the difference. Even... I'd say 40 to 50% of people that come on our training have already done a rent-to-rent -rent course, but yet they haven't had the success. And when they do ours, they then go off, they're doing the direct to vendor and they know negotiations. And those are the two missing pieces. They're the two key aspects that are missing. And once you've got those, so if you've done another course before, there's a few people online that have said they've already done a course and not had success. Um, if you just get those two pieces, I assure you, you will have success with this. And even most of the experts that actually come to me for training, you, they, they'll never admit to this, but they only get about two out of ten deals before they get training with me at best. And that's just ridiculous. What you want to be getting is eight out of ten, not two out of ten. And again, it is simple to do. There's a process. It's like anything in life. There's a formula. There's a pattern. Once you understand the pattern and you've broken it down as I have, you can build it back up and teach it. So next slide, Ash. So here's some of the some of the things we do. We we share with you our exact formula. There's nothing hold back, there's no upsells or, or anything like that on the training. We don't try and sell you into anything else. It's just a one time course with us and you get lifetime support. So that's all the documents, all the forms, everything there. There's a support group, there's a Facebook group, we have Skype sessions sometimes. Everything is involved. You don't, you don't pay any extra fees. And the other reason is because, as Ash has put there, I am, I'm, I am the sales trainer that trains other sales trainers around the world. So I'll actually show you really basic, simple process to actually negotiate effectively. We've had people come on that have known nothing about negotiations, absolutely nothing, and yet they've gone off and done so well, and they've never done anything like this before, just because they're selling, uh, following the process. The other thing we do is we teach direct to vendor. We don't teach letting agent strategies at all because they almost never work. We've had a couple of students that have had success with letting agents, but when you take into account 500 or so students, and two have had success with letting agents, it, it, it tells you everything you need to know. It's, you know, I'm trying to say it politely, it doesn't work. So, next slide, Ash. So, here's our next training. It's on August the 29th, which is a Saturday. And Day one, because it's a, it's a two-day course, and you can either do one or the other days or do both days, um, but we've only ever had a few people just do one one day. Most people do the, the, the both days. And here's just a few of the things that we cover. So most importantly, there's a there's this eight-step process to understanding how to identify and dominate your gold mine area. Again, this is usually missed by most people. They, they teach you know two or three ways to find your gold mine, and it's not that is not, that's not the way to do it. There's so many different things you need to do, so many variables, and you have to again find the pattern. And once you understand the pattern, you'll find this so simple. How to get in front of a lot of landlords? How to create the high-end finish that you saw on the picture for a very very low cost? I mean that that room you saw there probably cost. 300 pounds for the whole lot, for, for the beds, and um, wardrobe, chest of drawers, the, the, the painting and everything, curtains, wasn't a lot at all for that, um, such, such a low cost, but you saw the finish, it was very high end. The next one is crucial, and it's all the legalities. Please, I mean, there's one thing I'd say, I beg you, don't download any of these agreements that you find online, because they'll get you into so much trouble. And every day we have calls 
Neil Arsh, um, I used this management agreement and now I'm getting sued by the landlord. We had this problem, we had that, I'm getting sued or this happened. And it's just, it can all be avoided, just use the right agreement with, which Arsh and I have got. We're going to show you how to calculate the numbers. So we've got spreadsheets and things. If you're not very number savvy, that's fine because we'll actually show you how to do this and use the calculators. And then I'll show you my exact model of how I made that first 5K in five months. So you've got your first five months planned out. Next slide, Ash. <coughs> the next day is the 30th of August, which is the Sunday. Now this is the negotiations training. This is the only negotiations training course that I run in the UK at present. Uh, the others are run on the West Coast, so California, San Francisco, Las Vegas. If you were to attend one of those, which you're welcome to do, it is three and a half thousand dollars for a weekend. That's the price point, which is why Ash said, "Look, we can't charge those sort of that sort of money because people just haven't got the sort of money." So, will you do something um, that's affordable? So, what we now do, do is we just bolt this on. So it's a little bit of a freebie day, and um, that we we bolt on to the main course. So we'll, we'll we'll tell you about this in a second, but. These are some of the things you learn. We're talking about patterns, 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 all the way through. You're going to understand the patterns and be able to see and understand. I'm going to talk a lot of psychology and how people buy, like how they, how the thought process goes along, and the sales psychology. And then I'm going to show you the 12-step sales system, which is um, incredible. I didn't know what I'd stumbled upon when I first created it. But I've now taught this all around the world. T over 10,000 sales trainers, uh, sorry, sales people use this around the world now. And a lot of sales trainers are now licensed to use this system. It's incredible. It, it will take you from getting one or two deals out of 10 to eight or nine out of 10, or even 10, as some people have found that have done the course. You can do a lot of live interactions with each other. So this isn't you're on stage and everyone's watching you. No, it's, it's small groups, it's one-on-one, -on -one and you swap around, swap around, you practice in, practice in, practice in. Because the thing with a seminar is, um, and I won't go too much into the, the, the learning and Dale Edgar and learning patterns and psychology, but I will say this, just sitting and listening, listening, listening all day, your brain will only really retain 30% of that information after a couple of weeks. But when you do it live, you'll retain about 90% of that information, which is why I built the seminar in this way. So that's what you actually do on a day, and that's why everyone's so effective afterwards. Next thing is how to overcome objections. This is the key point. If you don't understand the objections that are going to come at you, you're going to waste months and months and months. You're just going to, it's crazy how fast your learning experience is cut just by knowing what objections come up and how to answer them. Next slide. So this is our, our normal rent to rent course. We usually have about 70 people in the room because that's, I think fire regs is 75 is all we can fit in. And we always use the same venue, which is the De Beer Hotel in Dudley. It's a really beautiful hotel and um, we use that when we like that. We, and you can also live stream the course as well. We usually have about 40 people live streaming. So, yeah, the, the negotiations is usually a little bit bigger. As you can see, we have to have a double screen on this one. So that's usually about 75 people, 50 people live streaming. Um, so next slide, Ash. So I think at present, I don't know if, I don't think we've updated this since last week, but we, we had 42 seats taken as a, um, a couple of weeks ago on Friday. So... Um, Ash can probably confirm the numbers tomorrow or later on. And we run these, I'd say about three times a year. So two to three times a year. So that's the sort of um, time span. After this course, because the question usually comes up when you run in the next one, I think it's, it's sometime in October, if, if um, October, November time, something like that. Um, but if we go to the next slide, Ash. So on day two, not to, I think we've pretty much talked about this in, in, in good detail, but 
I'm going to do three live negotiation sessions. Um, I'll also do a live on stage, um, which is, is always a fun one, where you just get whoever you want from, from, the, from the group and the most fiery person you want to sit there and negotiate with me. They're the landlord, and I guarantee you at the end of that negotiation, I'll have that property from them. Doesn't matter, you can tell them anything you want. No matter what, don't give the house to Neil, and I'll show you that the 12 step system works. They will always say yes at the end because there's just nowhere else to go. So, next slide. Okay, Ash, I'll let you sort of take over from here because um, we, we've got, what, 70, no, we've got 100 testimonials now, so um, I'll let you take over now, Ash. I think it's the quietest I've ever been, uh, which has got to be a new world record. Okay, so uh, here's some of the testimonials from some of the people. Um, remember, we were talking about Deborah. Uh, here's one of the ladies that gone on and done exceptionally well. These are the guys that are in our Facebook group um, and have gone off and, you know, every day they come in and ask new questions. So we've got those guys there. We've got these guys here. Susie Bates, which a lot of you will probably know. She's quite well known on the social media circuit. Uh, she came on our last course, I think it was, well, just earlier this year, and she's now got six properties, which she's doing really well. So... These are live testimonials of people who have come on at our course and said, you know what, they've done really, uh, you know, found it really inspiring and content packed. I appreciate we're running over, so there's a few of the few of the ones there. Now, let's forget about everyone else because what we're doing is, if you've got another course on rent to rent, and you know, there are lots of providers out there, expect to pay within the region between five and seven hundred pounds just for the one day. What we're offering tonight, and tonight only, is a two-day offer, 595. So that's two days for 595. But the beauty of it is, is that something that we've done and works extremely well is that for 595, you can bring yourself and your business or marital partner with you for free. So that's 595 for two people for two days. Now, how do you like the sound of that? Remember, this is probably the last one that we're running for this year, so if you are serious about this strategy, now is your time to take action because earlier on we talked about what your motivation is. A lot of you want to get out get out of your job and a lot of you want to make that passive income. Now we're approaching the end of the year. Maybe you can make this your New Year's goal to actually put this into motion. So two people for the price of one, 595 and... Or you can book on each course individually at five nine, uh, 495 per day. The other thing that we'll be looking at on the days is also about how to systemize it and turn it into a business. Because I appreciate that a lot of you want to create it as passive income. And we want to make sure that you've got the systems in place for that to be passive for you. So we'll be looking at the marketing and the furnishings and all the mind maps that go alongside with it. So you're going to be getting a lot of great value. Now, there's two options that you can do here. Uh, you can either attend in person, which is 595 for the whole weekend, and then the only other thing that you have, we look after your lunches, so you get uh, a buffet lunch, and then you get two refreshment breaks. Uh, alternatively, if you can't make the event, but you'd like to really listen in, we're going to be live streaming it. The, the live stream is the same price because you'll be getting all the documentation. We supply you with all the info and the documents prior to the event, so you're going to have exactly the same. You get to answer them. Ask the questions as you've been doing tonight. The laptop will be manned so that as soon as you ask a question, someone will uh, ask it ask it out or uh, say it out loud, and Neil and I will be responding. So you get to hear it exactly how it is. Now, if you like the thought of that, you know, by all means, please go to my website, which is arshilahi.com. Look at the events and uh, look at the R to R or look at the special tabs. And just to give you an example, uh, I'm, I'm going to quickly show you now because a lot of people always get lost on my website for some reason. Now, uh, in events, you can go to the Neil Ward Weekend Special Offer. And just so that you can book your friend on for free or your business partner on for free, on the far right-hand side of here, it says 595. tells you exactly where the venue is. 
you can add it to cart, you can bring your partner for free, you can add it to cart. More importantly, you can book yourself a hotel room on the website too. So that's just a little bit about that. Now, that's not all, because what we'll do is, as part of the package, we're actually going to give you all of our documents. So the rent-to-rent -rent documents, the guarantor documents, the mind maps, the legally binding tenancy agreement. And if you do decide to rent to people on housing benefits, I'll even give you all my housing benefits spreadsheets as well, as well as all the rent statements that you need so that you can emulate the 100% uh, rent collection record that I have. Ah, but that's not all because what we'll do is that to make sure that you're on track after the event, you have the opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one session with Neil on a Skype call, uh, which is worth well in excess of £300. And not only that, you get access to Neil's VIP Facebook group where he answers your rent to rent questions daily. So it, we've got a social media group, which is specifically uh, specifically just for the rent-to-rent -rent attendees. So again, talking about the rent, uh, the return on investment, on the basis that 595 is one month's worth of cash flow, you get 100% return on investment in month one per house and 1200% in year one per house. So, you know, when you look at it, you've got to look at it as a business expense. You can actually have it as tax deductible because it's a course. And remember guys, it is specifically for tonight that we're going to be looking at the two for one offer. After tonight and tomorrow, what we're going to be doing is saying that it is actually, you're going to have to pay 595 per person. So now is your time to take action. Uh, and and actually get yourself booked on, but more importantly, use this strategy to your best effect. So what you'll be looking, what you'll receive, you'll receive both days, so you'll receive the rent to rent day, you'll receive the sales training day, you'll receive the management agreement, you'll receive all the legal documents and template letters that we use, you'll receive the key to success, which is all of my property uh, documents that I have on a USB, which I'll put in a downloadable format, you get the buffet meal on each day, you get the membership to this Facebook group, you get a one-on-one -on -one call with Neil, and the lifetime support in the Facebook group. So, you know, you're getting a lot of value there, and it's very, it is very, very cheap. If you can, if you divide it by two people, it's less than £300 per couple, uh, per person for the weekend. So it is a one-off payment, or if need be, you can split the cost up, running up to the call, so I'm more than happy for you to call me and say, okay, I want to pay £75 off here, or £100 off there, whatever it may be. Um, so yeah, the dates again, 29th to 30th of August, it is at the Devere Village Spa Hotel, and if you, get to, if you do decide to stay over, and you stay over at the spa hotel, it's a fantastic hotel. We even sit around in the evening and have dinner and have drinks at the bar. So it's a more of a social event in the evening where we let our hair down, we talk to, we just had a catch up tea, and you know, there's a lot of business that gets done afterwards as well. So we've got the luxurious rooms there, uh, and you get to use all the spa facilities. Now the question we've got to ask is, what have you decided to do? Are you going to be one of the 5% of people who become rich and wealthy? Or are you going to end up as one of the 95% who end up broke? Now, we can't do any more than that. All we can do is tell you about what we've done, how we've done it. Now the rest is up to you. We can't force you to come on a workshop. But we can almost guarantee that the, the people who have come on the workshop has gone on to great successes. So I'm going to leave the rest with, with you. Um, I'll tell you what I will do actually, and I haven't really done this before because I just read one of the questions. Someone put, I'm not in the UK over that bank holiday weekend, but what? Um, but they would like to secure the deal. So what you can do is that, uh, I will have a look with Neil first thing in the morning when our next course will be for the rent to rent. It may be towards the tail end of the year, if not the start of next year, 
But if you want to secure your place at this great discount, we will allow you to secure your place and we will book you onto the next course. So that's a way that you can still use the great discount and still make sure that you're onto the next course. And if you've got any questions beforehand, we'll add you into the Facebook group beforehand so that you can start learning pretty much immediately. So that's something that I've never really offered before. So, you know, and just because if you are out of the UK, you can live stream the events. We've had people from Germany, as far as Australia, live stream the event and it works, believe it or not, rent to rent, wherever there's a rental property, wherever there's a demand for room rent, it works all around the world. So, you know, don't just treat it as an excuse. Now, finally, we're one of the two, a few trainers that actually give out a personal mobile number. So you've got Neil's number there. So by all means, you're more than welcome to call him and have a chat with him, or as well as connect with him on Facebook, Skype, and LinkedIn, as well as myself. You've got my personal website there. You've got my business website, as well as uh, personal mobile number, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. If you'd like to know more, by all means, get in touch. But alternatively, if you if you are really serious about this, the next step is for you to book online. Um, you've got you'll have my email address, which I'm happy for you to have a chat about. Um, and let's see let's see what we can do. I'm I'm very much open to the opportunity to try and help as many people as possible. Um, and on that note, I'm just going to quickly open up the. The microphone to Neil to see if he's got anything else to say. Neil? I'm muted. Neil? Yeah, hi Ash. I will just mention one thing. When you went through and you showed how uh, people can book on, um, there was a bit of a delay. So all we saw was the, um, you know, the end result, how to book, you know, it didn't show the process. So it might be worth just showing the, um, the tabs again. Just go through it slowly. Okay. Okay. So if you just go to your home page, um, all, all the events, yeah, that's fine. Okay, also, let's start. So, start. so we're on the home page right now. So the next thing you need to do is go to the events tab and just scroll down where it says the Neil, Way, Neil Ward weekend special offer. Click on that page. And you'll see on the right hand side, it says weekend course price 595. And you can click to add the cart there. Or alternatively, you could bring your business partner for free. Again, 595, add your cart, add to cart there. And if you wish to, you can book a hotel room at the same time for £110 for a double or £100 for a single. And it really is that simple. Uh, what I am going to do now, very quickly, is if you do have any other questions, now's your time to to ask. You know, we've got a couple of minutes. Uh, I I appreciate we have run over. So if there are any other questions, please, uh, please ask away, and let's see what we can do. Okay, so. Uh, uh, Okay, believe it or not, Neil, actually. So, okay, so one lady, uh, okay, so Zijan has just asked, how can we pay in installments? Well, what I'll do, Zijan, is that I'll, if I, I put my mobile number actually on the site now, if you want to give me a quick call, uh, If you want to give me a quick call or send me a message, what we'll do, we'll arrange a stage payment. You tell me what's convenient and how, and I'll try and make that happen for you. Okay, Audrey, uh, thanks. She says that she's going onto the website now, really worth waiting for. Thanks, guys, going onto the website now. Uh, the room rate's different, uh, price is different. Okay, it shouldn't be. Uh, I've just been on my website and it should be 110 for the double and 100 for the single. But if, if need be, if, if that's an issue, Audrey, what you can do is uh, 
secure your place on the course and then what we can do we can sort out rooms etc in the morning when i have a look and see if there's any issues with the website but i'm surprised that there's no call that there's no questions with regards to rent to rent okay interesting right so just quickly flicking through Okay, I don't think there's actually many questions, Neil. I think we've actually covered quite a lot. Okay. Right, that's a great question. Right, Ben's asked a fantastic question. He's put that on the 30 apartment deal, were you concerned about renting out 70 rooms? Yes, I was. But what we did, we did it in a format where we staggered the... Uh, the release of the apartment, should I say, because if I put 90, apart, uh, 90 rooms, 30 apartments times three rooms out into the market all in one go, it would have flooded the market. So what we agreed with the, with the landlord is that we took a certain amount of the landlord at a certain period. So we took uh, 10 apartments for the first two months and it allowed us to get rid of the 30 rooms within the first two months, then we took it. So it was pretty much over a six month period that we agreed, but this was all part of negotiations. If it was up to the landlord, he wanted me to take them off him immediately, which he would do. But the one thing that we've got to be conscious of is that if we put 90 rooms out straight away, we're not gonna be able to rent out 90 rooms straight away. Let's be realistic about it. Uh, so you know, we managed to do that. Um, we managed to do that so and he was happy with that you know the fact that we told him that we were being strategic about the way we were releasing gave him a little bit more confidence about what we do and how we do it as, as opposed to you know take 90 apartments off him not rent any of them and go bust the next day right okay so there's a few questions about uh, does the mortgage have to be a buy to let well, what we do is that in the management agreement, we put in their clauses that the landlord has to make sure that they have the correct consents in order for this to happen. So we make sure that, you know, with all due respect, it's not our property, it's not our mortgage that uh, we've signed up to. So the landlord has to do everything to make sure that they've got a consent to let and that they're able to let the room out, by, uh, the property out by the room. Right, okay. Great question, Matthew. Uh, what power team do you need for rent to rent? Um, Slisters, possibly, to, but if we're giving you an the agreement, then not necessarily. You do need builders because obviously you need builders and maintenance team because the more properties you take on, naturally there's going to be a few maintenance issues. Um, but they're, they're the biggest ones, really, I'd say builders and maintenance. But obviously you're going to be contacting a lot of builders. so to incentivize the builders to give you the landlord's leads, hopefully you'll be using them anyway. Right. Um, Zijan has just asked a question that you said there's no deposits for a property to take on. I've never paid a deposit to a landlord. I worked on the basis that I'm saying that I'm using my money to improve the standard of the property. Therefore, I'd rather retain that money to use it on the property as a pay to pay deposits and I've never paid one. Okay, so I'm just quickly going through. Right, okay, Mark has asked, what's the best places to find landlords? And the, you know, with all due respect, Mark, it's a very broad question because there's not one single way of trying to find the landlord. You know, and on the on the workshop we talk about a number of, of ways to find landlords. So, you know, for argument's sake, we'll start looking at talking about newspapers, we'll start talking about leafleting, we'll start talking about letters, we'll start talking about the tradespeople, we'll start talking about property portals. Um, you know, there's not, with marketing, there's not one right way to do it, but more importantly, with marketing, you've got to be in lots of different pockets and lots of different strategies of marketing to make sure that you're constantly getting leads. If you just stick to one strategy, sooner or, sooner or later, that's going to dry up. And you know, that, that is without a doubt. Um, okay. So what do I, what do I spot in houses to look up on land registry? 
Now, the one thing that you don't want to do, Chris, is that you don't want to start just spending money after money on land registry because land registry, every time you search for a property, is three pound. You know, there's lots of other ways of doing it, uh, of finding out about who owns a property. And land, land registry should re- near enough be your last port of call. You know, we, we on the workshop again, we go through the whole process about how if you find a property, if you spot a property, what you do. More importantly. If you're using the tradespeople, as Neil suggested in the webinar, you won't need to track the owner because they already have the contact details for the owner. So I hope that helps. Um, right, just having a quick look at it. Insurance visibility from the landlord. One thing that you need to make sure is that One thing that you need to make sure is that when you're dealing with the landlord, the landlord has the correct insurance policy in place. One thing that I've done is I've actually said to the landlord that I'll insure the property for them and I put them on my block management system. So again, it all comes down to terms of the negotiations. You know, uh, it, all, it all comes down to what the landlord's got and but more important, how you can make his life easier. I think on that note, ladies and gentlemen, I think we've pretty much answered most of the questions, if not all the questions. The rest is now up to you. I can only push you so far. I can only teach, show you what I've done so far and what we've done. The rest, you know, you decide what you want to do, how you want to do. Um, and I, I'd love to say that I'm going to meet you all on the, the next Rent to Rent workshop. Um, and if that's the case, fantastic. And I look forward to being part of your journey. I'm looking forward to seeing the success that you can generate from this strategy. But more importantly, look forward to seeing the progress of you getting to financial freedom. I'm just going to unmute Neil and I'm going to say good night for now. And I wish you all the very best the rest of the evening. I appreciate we have run over. I hope you found it of great value. Uh, and hopefully, I look forward to seeing you at the end of August. Unmuted. Oh, I'm unmuted. Oh, I was I was dying to jump in on some of those questions. So what we'll do is when you come to the event, um, like most of, most of the time when we run the event, you'll have millions of questions. Write them all down, and um, we'll get them all answered on, on the weekend. So on that note, thank you for for tuning in and, and listening to me for the last hour and a half. So I'll I'll see you all soon. Thank you.